Hey Terry, thank you for allowing me to record your two-handed backhand. Um, I'm really excited to do this and I'm going to compare you today side-by-side -side with Kim Kleisters, uh, who's on the WTA Tour. And I think there's a lot of things that you do really well in your backhand. And so the suggestions I'm going to make, I would suggest that you do one thing at a time. And once you improve on that one thing, you can move to something else. I think today my primary concern starts with um, your ready position. So when I evaluate a two-handed backhand, I have six checkpoints I like to look at. Number one is your ready position. Number two is your unit turn. Number three is your racket drop. Number four is contact. Number five is your extension. And number six is your finish. Those are the things I like to look at. And within that, I think about your grip, your body, and your swing. So let's go ahead and get started on this because I'm really excited to get going on this. Okay, so number one, your ready position. The things that you do really well. Love the fact that you have a good knee bend. Love that your feet are shoulder width apart. I love that your hands are off your body. Okay, good racket out in front. Now this backhand was better. Your racket tip is pointing up. Whoops, like Kleister's. Okay, your racket head is pointing vertically, so is hers. There's a couple of them that you don't do that in in this one. So always make sure that racket head is pointed up. You want to be ready to hit that ball. Okay, so overall I like your ready position. Here's what I want to change, and it has to deal with your grip. Okay, as you come through and hit this ball, okay, it looks like you have an eastern and an eastern. Um, so like shaking hand grip for the forehand and backhand. So that's not necessarily a bad thing right here. Okay, but this is the primary cause of why your racket face is open on contact. There's a lot of inconsistencies when I'm looking at this. One, the racket face was closed. So what I mean by closed or neutral, there it is. That's a closed flat racket face on contact. What's happened to yours is that your racket face ends up opening up, shooting the ball to the sky. Okay, so that can be a, a major issue. And so we want to look at that and we want to fix that. Okay, so, so what happens there is that when that have that continental and continental, this is what we call on edge. Your racket face is flat there. Okay, and when you come through, it can cause your racket face to be open on contact, not closed like Kleister's is here. That's what we want to get to. And I think by changing that right hand, if we change that right hand to a continental grip, okay, that is actually going to force this racket to close a little bit and point at the ground. Okay, and that means the racket face is closed and will be neutral when you hit that ball. So there it is, number one, from the ready position, I want to change that grip. That's the big thing I want you to work on first. Okay, so let's go back to ready position here for both players. Okay, and so now we're in ready position again. And watch what Kleisters does. When she takes that racket back, and this is my second suggestion, she has an imaginary line here where she goes up and over, almost over this, I drew it a little high. But we call that a two-headed monster there. Notice how her racket strings are pointed at the camera. She's looking at the ball, two-headed monster. Okay, um, that's what we want you to have on your unit turn. So the second change I would make is your take back. And if we draw this line, about waist high, we want that racket to go over. Now this one wasn't as bad as your other two. Not bad, I shouldn't say that. It wasn't as consistent. Your racket just drops. And so that affects position number three. Okay, so I'm gonna clear this. Um, see your racket's low. Okay, look at the difference here in the height um, down here versus Kleister's, right? Okay, from there's our two-headed monster. There's a big difference there. Your racket strings are pointed at the camera, which is good. Okay, we've already kind of talked about your racket being on edge, but we want that racket to stay up longer and create that two-headed monster. That will help us in step three. Okay, so your, your strings are pointed at us. Your hands are off your hips. Okay, and with that grip change, and if we can keep that racket going up above that imaginary line, right, 
if we keep our racket above that imaginary line kind of here on the take back or maybe even maybe even a little bit higher let's just go up here um, you see Kleister's back elbow here we need that back elbow to be up okay we need that back elbow yours is kind of low it's not bad we just need to change it it's at the right height but it needs to be pointed a little more up like Kleister's is there okay so this is now bringing us into the racket drop. But what happens here is you don't have that racket drop because of the unit turn. So we've lost acceleration coming through, lost the ability to hit a more top spin than we could. Um, so if we zoom out a little bit, okay, watch Kleister's. Her racket's going to go down and around like this, right? It drops. It's going to pick up acceleration that she needs, okay, and hits that flat, that, that flat racket face, neutral racket face okay and here for us you're more linear okay there's not that loop because you drop right away you're more linear through your swing okay and notice how that racket face gets really open there unfortunately and that's just with part of that as being the grip when you have a continental grip it can make you wristy trying to make sure that racket face is neutral on contact and i probably said that we want that to be neutral you're a little up but changing that grip is going to help tremendously okay so i want you to notice we clear this out okay um Kleister's has a little bit of elbow bend here and here and notice you have the same thing here and that's pretty good. You have a nice little, oops, nice little elbow button on both sides. I don't think I can draw it there, okay? Which is really impressive, okay? I think your contact point, like Kleister's, is also out in front. So we're on, we're on step four now. We kind of did some step three stuff. Your contact point is in front of your body. Anywhere from 12 to 18 inches in front is great. Yes, your racket face is open, but we've already discussed how we're going to change that. Um, what else I love about this from step two or step three the racket drop to forward contact point is your hips okay so you're here and the body comes up a little bit notice how you're look at that little back leg kick up well i got supposed to all right your back leg kicks up there and then your hips rotate through on your swing which is exactly what we want to do okay so that's great on the contact point so racket so your racket drop to contact right you get that hip turned your heel comes up which is great and I feel like you do well, what we also want to add to that is a slight knee bend um, if you watch Kleister's not a knee bend I'm sorry a drop so let's put a line above her head right here and see that when she goes to hit that backhand oh, did she drop I think yes yeah, so look at that see how it goes low look at her hat so you can see her hat kind of is up see above below so when that racket drops her body drops a little bit and that's the other thing we want you to do because that's going to add power to this backhand okay I think you're a little too vertical um, you do have a knee bend but as your racket drops we want your knee to bend right you kind of stay you do, well, you do a little bit here but I'd like to see a little bit more. And we'll talk about the chair activity that we're going to be able to do later. Okay. When you follow through, you want to try to keep that racket on the same side. And when we extend through, excuse me, let's talk about step five here. Okay. Did I lose your backhand? Hold on. I'm sorry. See, that one was consistent. Here we go. Here's our one. I'm sorry. I went to. Okay. When we hit. See, that was not not as open as the last one. Okay. And we want to make sure we're extending through that target a little more. And basically, you want to show your armpits to your opponent. And look how your armpits are kind of. Let's see. Let's change that arrow here. Kind of facing that way. We want to air out your armpits going this way and we got to extend through that target more you got to follow through to your target a little more instead of coming so we want your racket to go that way versus kind of whipping around the side like that okay we don't want your racket whipping across your body and that's what it kind of does here when you hit that backhand okay comes across see how it whips look see how it comes across your body 
we'd like that to go in a more lifting pattern, more up and out. Oops, up and out there. Okay, so Kleister's there. So she comes through a little more. She comes around and, and notice how her strings, okay, are faced toward the audience, okay? So we've already talked about that little contact point. Okay, and we want the racket to stay on the same side, the left side of your hands, kind of like Kleister. See, if you look, her racket's on the left side. Her racket's going to be on the left side of her hands there as long as she can. And where strings are a little bit pointed down here. Okay, we want those strings to kind of be pointed that way towards the audience. Okay, so overall, I think that was a really good job that you did there on the backhand. So the number one thing, uh, Terry, that I would change is the grip uh, and the unit turn. I think if you do the grip and the unit turn, it's going to help the racket drop. I think it's going to help the, the, the contact point. The only other thing I would add to that is making sure that you bend your knees when the racket drops, when your body lowers, and keeping the, the racket on the left side of the body. Okay, so now in the next part of this, I'm going to go on court and show you some drills to do. Hi Terry, thank you for allowing me to look at your two-handed backhand and now I'm on court and I'm going to show you some drills and kind of mention some things I talked about in the in the side-by-side -side video comparison. Um, number one, I thought you had a great ready position on your two-handed backhand, okay, your both hands were on the frame, your racket head was up, tip up, your knees were bent and it was great. The primary thing that I want to change in your backhand that I see is grip, okay, we think about grip, body swing, and remember all the checkpoints from the video. You have your ready position, unit turn, racket drop, contact, extension, follow through, okay? Your primary cause or issue, I think, comes from your ready position and your unit turn. Um, you have an eastern backhand grip, which is pretty common for the non-dominant hand all the way through, but we do have some variations here on the grip. You have an Eastern and Eastern, almost like shake hands, shake hands, okay? You can go to Continental, and believe it or not, some people do Eastern uh, backhand uh, grip here, like a one-handed backhand. So there's kind of three variations you have here. So Eastern and Eastern, notice how my left, my non-dominant hand is going to stay the same. There's Continental, and there is Eastern. We are going to switch you from Eastern to Continental. And the reason being is that when you go to hit your backhand, with your eastern to eastern, your racket's on edge, so your racket's like this, okay? That's the thing. So we call that on edge. You see the edge? And what happens is, is when you go to hit, your racket face is open. You can see that it's open and the ball's going to go into the air. What that causes, because that racket face is in the air, the ball's going to pop up, but it also tr makes players a little risky trying to turn that right wrist into getting into that neutral or close position to hit that two-handed backhand. Now, pros do use that. Pros do use your grip, okay? But in our case, what I want to do is change that grip to a continental. And you can see it here. If I'm in ready position and I go to make my unit turn, my grip should already change. Watch. Here's eastern, eastern, like your forehand. And there's a the change. You see my racket head turns, right? It's a mic microscopic turn. And what happens here is if I'm in my unit turn already, you're on edge. Now watch what happens when I go to Continental. Do you see how now that angle is closed? It goes from here to here. And when I come down to hit, my racket now is neutral or sometimes even closed versus when you were here. There's the grip change. There's where your grip is, the uh, Eastern Eastern for both hands. Here's when we change your right hand to Continental. We, that's the big thing. It's going to close that racket face. That's one of the big things that I see. So we want to change that grip, in my opinion. That's change number one. Change number two, you're having a little bit of trouble on the take back. If I'm going to do my two-handed backhand, we're going to turn like this, and we want the two-headed monster like I talked about in the video, racket head here and here. What happens to you, you want your racket face up, that back elbow out like we talked about, not tucked. What happens is that when you start your backhand, you turn with the racket up 
and then right away it begins to dip down, which affects number three with the racket drop. You're losing acceleration. We need that racket up here to come down and accelerate through and follow through to give us extra power, acceleration. Gravity drops the racket head through the swing. You pick up speed. You're going to pick up power. You're going to hit more spin because there's faster racket head movement. We lose that when we do this, okay? So how do we prevent from doing that? Well, number one, I, you could use a pool noodle. I don't have it. Someone can hold a racket out and you go over it. But what I'll show you here is we can use, I'm going to use the net post here. So in a second, you'll see me at the net. So hold on one minute. Hi, Terry. So I didn't have a pool noodle, um, and we'll talk about this, or a racket to go over something. I'm just going to use this net post as a guide. It's, it's pretty tall. It's at my waist. And so what I'm going to do is pretend I'm in my nice ready position. And what happens to you is you go down and hit this. You kind of turn and start that racket down versus just going up. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm just going to get my racket over the net and just freeze. That's all I'm going to do. Okay, can turn my grip too. Okay, so here, grip change, boom. And notice my hands go right over this. And you can practice this a hundred times. I'm over exaggerating, right? I'm over exaggerating my two handed backhand because I want to. Okay, so two hands, boom, and making sure that racket starts up. When it's up, then we can start that, oops, start that <laughs> racket dropping. Okay, I want to break my frame here. Okay. So those are the two things I see. The last thing I want to talk to you about is making sure we extend our racket out um, to our target. And, and I'll go through and I'm going to use the net cord here. Um, I'm going to move this just a bit. Keep rolling. So the net or a fence works great for this. And ideally, I want to air out my armpits, old Vic Braden style. I want to air out my armpits at the end. Okay, what's happening is you're coming over like this. We're not quite airing out our armpits. So I want you to extend through your target a little more, okay? And the net can be a really good friend for that. And you can start from ready position and do this. You can also, you can also start turn sideways in your unit turn, do this a few times, and then go to ready position. So when I look at this, I kind of measure myself out so I can swing through, right? I don't want to be here. I kind of measure out, and it's like, okay. So I'll start with my grip change. Here on my two-handed backhand, right shoulder turn, and I will follow this as long as I can. And air out my armpits. Go really slow. So I'm not worried about how much my racket face is dropping here. I'm just trying to extend out a little bit longer towards my target. And as you get better, you're holding it on the fence or the net, excuse me, a little bit longer, 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 off, off, and finish, right? Okay. Then you can do from ready position, grip change there, boom, 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 off. Ready position, boom, 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 on the way, net off, okay, to work on the extension. And the last little tip of advice I have on that back end is getting those knees bent. You start beautifully with those knees bent, right? So I've got a chair, and you get a lot of power, a lot of power from the chair. Not the chair itself, okay, but we really get a lot of power from bending our knees and lifting into the shot. So you've got to think about when someone's feeding, sitting in a chair. So you can start from your unit turn with your grip, okay, racket head up, and when the racket head drops, your knees drop. You drop and come up and lift, right? So, and you can do the extension here too. Look, you can do two for one. So. I'm in my ready position, here's my backhand, okay, and sit, and sit, my chair's pretty low, I don't have to sit exactly in the chair, okay, I don't have to sit exactly in the chair, but I want to bend my knees. When that racket head starts to drop, you can see naturally I should go low and lift, right, it's a lifting sport, lift, low to high, right, with the body, okay. So Terry, I hope I gave you some good suggestions on that backhand, starting with that grip change, keeping that racket head up, two-headed monster, bend those knees on the backhand and extend out through that backhand, okay? 
I guarantee if you work on these, you're going to start to feel better about that backhand. You're going to play better tennis, and you're going to win more matches. Again, I want to thank you for your time, uh, and I look forward to seeing you again.